talk about solo man. Solomon equals solo man equals one man. Now, why we got to make it so difficult when God has made it so easy for us today? Now, when you say, yes, man, if you were Jamaican, you would say, yes, man. Man equals man, okay? Even it's British to say man. Man means man. So, so simple. This is so simple. Let us not make it so hard. Solo man equals one man. God loves taking one man and doing extraordinary things with him. This is what he did for Moses. He wanted to use Moses by himself. It was because of Moses' weakness in himself, not believing he was a good speaker, that God suffered Aaron, his brother, to help him. But the Bible says that Moses was like a god, and Aaron was his prophet, okay? But all of the sovereignty of that prophethood rested solely upon Moses. Moses was the man. Moses was the lawgiver. God said he would raise up another prophet who would be like Moses, meaning God was going to use one man in the future to give us a new law. Now I have a meme on the screen. I want you to look at it. Because this is exactly how Christians are. They got their binoculars. They search it for all type of scriptures where they can find Jesus in it. They'll even go to Genesis 3.15 and say, oh, that's Jesus. Don't say Jesus, but they'll find Jesus with their binoculars in the Old Testament. But when you show them the prophecies of Mohammed right here in the Bible, then they blind. <laughs> then they like Ray Charles. They can't see it even when his name is written in the Hebrew language in plain sight. They are in denial. Okay? They're like an alcoholic who is in denial. He doesn't want to fess up that he's an alcoholic. Okay? So that's exactly what the Christians do. They see all these prophecies of a prophet coming out of Paran, which is Mecca, and then they'll just ignore it. And then they'll slap Jesus on everything. Even in the Israelite movement, they do the same things. But what happens is, they slap Jesus on all these scriptures, but then they leave no room for the other messengers. Like in Song of Solomon. It talks about one being black like the tents of Kadar. Okay? And they'll say, and they'll say, oh, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. In Song of Solomon, chapter one and five and six. They'll say, oh, that's Jesus. But then right here in Song of Solomon, it talks about Another messenger, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, being white. And they're like, oh, oh, that's still talking about Jesus. That word white just means purity. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. That word white, if you look it up, it literally means dazzling. Okay? The closest definition you can use for that word is going into radiant. Like, Someone being transfigured. And there's a story in the New Testament where Jesus was transfigured before his disciples, okay? So that word white don't mean pure. That word white means white. And we'll get to that. Let's go to Song of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 16. It's on your screen. Now, Christians, they want to play dumb, okay? Those that are in Judaism, they want to play dumb. All the Jewish rabbis 
Most of them want to play dumb. Some of them are converting to Islam because they can't deny it. But here we have in the book of Solomon or the book of Solo Man, one man, the book of one man, we have the prophet Muhammad's name in Song of Solomon 5.16. His mouth most sweet. And yes, he is altogether Mohammedan. So is it a coincidence in the same chapter where it is talking about solo man? They're bringing up the founder of Islam, which is the prophet Mohammed. His name is right here. We know this is a male because it says he is altogether Mohammed. This is my beloved. In other words, this is my David. Now I'm going to show you. Let's go to the screen. Look on there. You'll see that the name David actually means beloved. So when I bring out the types and shadows of the prophet Mohammed, and how David is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. I'm spot on. Now, let's continue to go through the Song of Solomon. Let's go to Song of Solomon 5 and 10. My beloved or my David is white. Okay. And ready. That means red. The chief is among 10,000. Now, is it another coincidence that it's describing the complexion of the Prophet Muhammad? Because the Prophet Muhammad was white. Oh, okay? Yeah. He was white, but then he was red. Okay? So, I have on the screen a hadith. And it reads, Volume 1, Book Number 8. Number 367. I have a lot to go over today, so I'm just going to go to the meat of it. It reads, he uncovered his thigh, and I saw the whiteness of the thigh of the prophet. So the prophet Muhammad's thigh was white. Let's get another one. This is going to be in the Al-Bakari. At that time, the prophet was sitting amongst us, his companions, Leaning on his arm. We replied, this white man reclining on his arm. The prophet Muhammad was called a white man. Now let's keep going. This is going to be Al-Bakari 3544. He was white and his beard was black with some white hair. So now let's get that. Let's go back to where we was at in the Song of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 10. My beloved is white. The prophet Muhammad was white. And ruddy. The prophet Muhammad, his cheeks were red. And we're going to get that in a minute. The chief is among 10,000. When the prophet Muhammad showed up in Mecca in 629 CE, he was the chief amongst exactly 10,000 converts. Muslim. Okay. Verse 11. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. So now, is it a coincidence that the prophet Muhammad's name is in Song of Solomon 516? Is bringing up his exploits of him being chief over the 10,000 Muslims who accompanied him in Mecca. Then is bringing up the skin complexion and the skin complexion is white. We see. Then it's bringing up the hair color. The prophet's hair was black. Just like what the Song of Solomon is saying. Now, I've done the research for you. I've done the research for you. It's right here in plain sight. All of the Hadiths are available online. It's showing you his skin color, his hair color, his height. All of that information is available to you. His eyes were like doves. He had big eyes. Okay. His teeth were white. Okay. 
and his cheeks are as a bed of spices. Now, let's get some more insight on the Prophet Muhammad's redness. This is going to be Al-Bakari 6109. The Prophet entered upon me while there was a curtain having pictures of animals in the house. His face got red with anger. So the man's face was red. Okay, it is said that his cheeks were rosy, just like what the Song of Solomon is saying in chapter 5. What is wrong with us? You know, the problem is we don't want to worship Allah with no partners. The problem is we don't want to pray the daily salat. The problem is we don't want to live a life full of discipline. The problem is we don't want to give up alcohol. The problem is we don't want to be clean. Okay? But to sit up here and say that you don't see the truth that's right before your eyes, that is a lie. That is a lie. People know this is worldwide common knowledge amongst all men. We know that the Prophet Muhammad's name is mentioned in Song of Solomon chapter 5, 16. Not only that, his complexion, his hair color, the color of his cheeks, his military exploits, all that stuff is right here in the Song of Solomon chapter 5, verse 16 with his name. Now, the Christians ought to be ashamed of themselves. They go through the Bible from Genesis to Revelations and they put Jesus in scriptures where it don't even say his name. Okay? That's how far they have gone off the deep end. This is how deep they are in idolatry. Okay? They literally put Jesus on everything. You don't even have room for the other messengers. Thank God that there's a prophecy of John the Baptist in the book of Isaiah. And Jesus was the one who pointed that out in the Gospels. Or else the Christians would have thought that prophecy was about him. They literally slapped Jesus on everything. So you, you ain't going to be able to sit up here and play dumb. You can't play dumb no more. The truth is right before your eyes. So is it a coincidence that the prophet's name is mentioned in the book of Solo Man with his hair color, with his skin color, with the number of men exactly who was with him when he invaded Mecca in 629 CE and destroyed the idols? 10,000. Just like David was famous for the ten thousands. That's why the prophet was called my beloved. Beloved means David. The prophet Muhammad was told in the Quran to remember David. For he was one who always called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Christians can't play dumb. These so-called Israelites can't play dumb. The truth is right here before your eyes. Now let's get some more in the Hades on the prophet being white. It's on the screen. Yes, he had a white, handsome face. This is speaking of the prophet. The prophet Muhammad was white and ruddy. Now he had a fair white color, which is called Azhar, and that means not absolutely white, okay? This means he had a mixture of redness, okay? That's why in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10, which is a scripture I don't hear many Muslims bringing up, okay? But it says that he was white and ruddy. Now, the Bible says that David was ruddy. Let's get that scripture. This is going to be 1 Samuel 16 and 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now, he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. 
Now, 1 Samuel 17, 42. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Now, that is exactly the complexion of the prophet Mohammed. The prophet Mohammed was white, okay? Until you get up close on him, you'll see his mixture of the reds, just like an Arab, okay? So you can't sit up here and lie no more, okay? I'm exposing the truth. Also, I wanted to bring up the fact that in the Bible, they was given the right to kill their enemies. But what happened was the New Testament came. Then they not allowed to fight. Then in the nation of Islam, we are allowed to fight again. So it went from fighting, and we know from the Bible, God loves the art of fighting. God loves fighting. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that he wants us killing each other all the time, but war and fighting in the cause of Allah has been prescribed upon us. Okay? That's a reward, okay, fighting in the cause of Allah. Just like in the Old Testament, they was given the right to jihad. They was given the right to fight. They was given the right to bear arms. But what happened? The New Testament came. Saul came along. Now you remember Saul, Saul of the Old Testament. He was told to kill Agog. He was told to kill all of the Edomites. He was told to even kill the animals. Women, children, kill them all. But what happened? Saul let the king live. And he let some choice sheep survive. Okay? He allowed some of the people to stay alive. And the prophet Samuel came on the scene and here we have Saul acting like he was obedient to the heavenly vision when the prophet was like, hold on. What's this bleeding of the sheep I hear? What's this noise I hear? And he was like, well, we saved the choice sheep to sacrifice to the most high. And the prophet Samuel was like, God didn't tell you to sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He told you to kill them all. Okay? And that's when the kingdom was taken from Saul. And then what did the prophet do? The prophet did something amazing. The prophet went over to Agog with the sword. And Agog literally thought he was going to live. Not so. Just like the Christian today. And what did the prophet Samuel do? He hacked him in pieces, okay? That was a picture of the Gentile prophet who would not only be a prophet, but he will be a killer in the cause of Allah. So that shows you how off Christianity is. Christianity is a weak pacifist religion, okay? The Old Testament was about fighting, but what happened? The New Testament came. But thank God for a true prophet. And that prophet was Muhammad, peace be upon him, who prescribed upon us again, fighting in the cause of Allah. So here we have in the book of Solo Man. I'm going to keep calling it Solo Man because you don't get it. This is the book of one man, y'all. It's the book of one man. It is the book of the prophet like Moses. Moses was one man that God used to give the law. And it's the same thing with the prophet like unto Moses, the prophet Muhammad. God used one man to start the fastest growing religion on the planet right now as we know of. And by the year 2050, it is said that Islam will be the largest religion on planet Earth. 
Now this is prophesied in the Quran. The Quran literally says that the religion of Islam would prevail over all religions. Now wake up and stop playing dumb. Okay? Stop acting dumb. The truth is right before your eyes. Solo man or solo man was a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. Now think about solo man or Solomon. In the time of Solomon, this man had more wives than anybody. He had more wives. Now, the prophet Muhammad, because he is the seal of the messengers, okay? This man was given the right to marry as many women as he wanted. Now, in the Quran, it says that the Muslims are supposed to only have up to four. But because this man is the seal of the prophets, the prophet Muhammad was given the right to marry as many women as he wanted. Okay? Now that's a picture of Solomon. Just like the old Solomon. He was accused, and he actually did it, okay? The old Solomon in Bible days, he actually worshipped the moon goddess, Ashtoreth. Now, the real Solomon, okay, the prophet Muhammad, he is accused of worshipping the moon god, okay? And they call it Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not true. Allah is the Lord of the worlds, okay? He is the one and only true God. And the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, has led us into the right path. And that is to worship Allah with no partners. Okay, so quick recap. Muhammad is crystal clear in the Song of Solomon. He's mentioned in there by name, that Song of Solomon 516. Muhammad was whitish, reddish. Muhammad was chief of the 10,000. That's in history, 629 CE. Muhammad had black hair. Muhammad's neck was like ivory because he was considered white. The prophet Muhammad's nose was like the Tower of Lebanon. Now, I didn't go through all of this. You're going to have to do your own studying. You're going to have to see the shape of his nose. It was long, okay? It was like the Tower of Lebanon. The Prophet Muhammad was naturally fragranted. You can look at that in the Hades. Did you know they was trying to collect the man's sweat? The man's sweat was fragranted. Okay? <laughs> he woke up like, what y'all doing? Alright? They was trying to collect the man's sweat because the man's sweat smelled good. Now we know we can't do that for some of y'all. <laughs> Most of y'all, okay? If not all of y'all, all of us, rather. And the Prophet Muhammad was radiant like the moon. That's also in the Hadiths. You got to look that up, okay? This is for truth seekers, okay? I know there's not one magic scripture. There's nothing I can do that can wake you up. This is all God's providence. If he chooses to wake you up, he wakes you up. But what I'm presenting is 100% truth. Everything I brought out, you can call me on it. Okay? The prophet Muhammad was also called a Shulamite. Now, Shulam goes back to a place in Palestine. Okay? So this is just a short message on Solomon, solo man. Okay? Stop acting dumb. I have to keep telling y'all. Stop acting dumb. You know that ain't no coincidence. Here it is in the book of Solomon. We have the prophet Muhammad's name in there. His name is in there. With a plural of respect on the end. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.